Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Zeb Wellborn, president of the Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome you today to our regularly scheduled business at breakfast, which is every Wednesday from 745 to 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, today, we have our guest speaker uh, who is here. Her name is Connie Medina from Clarity Consulting, and she is going to be talking about three keys to getting the right things done to grow your business. But first, we like to get a chance to network or get to know each other and uh, do some kind of formal stuff. So with that, we're going to start off with our Pledge of Allegiance. So our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Jeff has been kind enough to choose his background as the American flag. So Jeff, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning? Sure. Uh, right hand over heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag. And it's the United States, 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 States of America. And to the Republic, Republic, Republic for which it stands. God. One, one nation. One nation. One nation. One nation. This is for all. It's liberty and justice for all. For all. <laughs> for all. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Very well done. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, would you mind doing the invocation for us today? Sure, please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, if we had a thousand tongues, we could not thank you enough for what we're going to do today and meet together, Father God, and flourish our businesses and great, uh, meet up with great people and have a presentation that will hopefully and uh, endure and keep everybody together as we uh, are blessed today in our businesses and our meeting President uh, Zed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Kevin. And uh, now we're going to open it up for community announcements. So if anybody has any type of community announcements that you'd like to share, now's the time to do so. Just raise your hand or use the virtual raise your hand. Well, if I may, Zeb. Um, uh, yeah. Louis and Mary, it's the first time I've actually participated and engaged here. Uh, I am a Chino Valley Chamber member. And uh, again, thank you, Zeb, yesterday for uh, opening up this uh, invitation to come in here. Um, my name is Lewis. Uh, Bring More Clients is the name of the company, Consultant. Uh, there's basically a hybrid of consulting I do. It's marketing along with merchant services, and that's what I do. So when you guys are at, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome. Anybody else? Zeb, I have one quick one, and Vicky's on here. I don't know why she's not putting out, but Vicky's doing an event tonight that's a free <laughs> event to help us uh, – Help us as being home-based, like most of us are. How do we do business better? What advantages do we have? What things can we change up? How are we going to be prepared to move forward in the new norm after this thing kind of unrolls? So if you guys want to register for this event, I think Vicki already put it into the chat box. If not, she will. It's called Do You Neo? And it's, she has a sponsor for it. It's free. There's no obligation. Just lots of incredible information on not only technology, but just the different things we could do as, as our whole – marketing and the way we do business has changed dramatically so go to that 6 p.m tonight it is also recorded but i would encourage you to check it out it's a great event a lot of fun a lot of prizes they give away free things just for showing up so check it out very cool and vicky you got a very good hype man here he's he's bringing that up every week so <laughs> well you know it's it is free and it's helpful for people to learn new levels of things in their in, own businesses tonight we actually have business stuff and an, um, something that helps you get books and stuff into, you already written a book to get them into big box stores, which I get right now is a little rough, but the digital copies into the libraries, because those are really big things. So anybody who's written a book or interested that this, uh, her segment is also a good part for that. Very cool. Any other community announcements? All right. Yeah, uh, how about our, uh, how about our entrepreneurial contest tonight? Sure. Well, I'll be bringing that up eventually, but I can bring it up multiple times. So, so yeah. There you go. We have uh, tonight is our, not tonight. Tomorrow night is our Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce pitch competition. So we imagine it's like a Shark Tank type thing. We have five finalist groups. So there's five groups of students that are going to be pitching their product or service that they've already sh they've already created. Uh, they're going to be doing it live in front of a panel of judges. These judges are going to decide on. Uh, how the students are going to get $5,000 worth of funds as grants to use for whatever purpose they want have a seed money or college fund or however they want to use it. Um, this is our first time doing it. So we are very excited about it. We've got a really good uh, contribute, a big sponsor list that has come out to support this, which is kind of a, a, amazing considering all the stuff that we're going on. So we're really excited about it. 
So uh, you guys should all be there tomorrow night from six to nine o'clock. We plan to have some kind of entertainment thrown in as well. So it'll be a full normal program as if we were in person, but we'll be doing it via Zoom, obviously. Uh, so thank you, Drew. Uh, with that, we're gonna start with our 30 second commercials. So this is an opportunity to just kind of give a brief introduction about who you are, what you do, why you do it. We try to keep those to within 30 <laughs> seconds. So do the best you can. Uh, to keep those within 30 seconds and we're going to go in the order that's on my screen i'll try to use the chat box to let people know who's up and when they're up uh, so on my screen i have kevin going first so kevin hi good morning my name is kevin steady i'm representing rosa's city a one-stop shop for floral design needs we're not just your local florist but we do cover a vast area of uh, the inland empire and los angeles uh, we customize personalized flowers just for you we put Ecuadorian roses. We personalize it with your name, your face, whatever you'd like, on a fresh rose design. So we're called for Roses Say, your floral design needs. And when you need florists and you want to personalize your flowers, check out Roses Say, your one-stop shop for floral design. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Jeff. Good morning, Jamber. Jeff Backer with Ultimate Source and the Pomona Valley Habitat for Humanity. Um, just hoping everybody's staying safe. A brief update on our upland build with the Habitat for Humanity. Um, it is slowly moving on. We cannot use volunteers because of the coronavirus. So we are actually using construction people and it's just a slow build because of, when you're trying to build something, trying to physically distance in a house is difficult. So um, we're still hoping that sometime in June or July, we will complete the house and hopefully be able to have an opening and have everybody there for a ribbon cutting. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. David. Oh, there it is. Morning, everybody. David Bear with PFA. Um, also one of the membership directors here at the chamber. So if uh, you know of someone that should be joining the chamber during these uh, tough times that you know needs that extra added uh, input and into the community give me a call let me know who they are and i'll be happy to follow them up a uh, little bit about pfa living life by design in other words you can protect yourself against all the things that your family may face through this crisis including coronavirus um we uh we incorporate a um a um, IUL with all kinds of living benefits, critical care, critical injury, all of those kinds of things, even, even critical brain injury, um, all kinds of things com combined into one plan uh, for a lot less than probably what you're paying now. So give me a call, let me ta let's talk about it and we'll go from there. Have a, have a good morning. Thank you, David. Carlos. Let me, I think you're muted. Carlos, I think you're muted right now. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Uh. Okay, well, that happens. Hi, so I'll start over again. My name is Carlos Rodriguez. This is my first uh, morning meeting. And uh, I'm the business development manager for a Lewis Management Corp. Um, I deal with our broker community and also to... I just started the position about a couple months ago, right as the, this big wave of uh, coronavirus broke. And so normally I'd be going out and meeting people in person. And I've had to basically step into the position in a completely virtual sense. So it's kind of a whole different environment for starting off. Um, but, uh, you know, we try to introduce, uh, you know, Lewis. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows what we do. We have a lot of apartment communities in Chino. Uh, we have a lot of buildings in Rancho and just introduce the public to our product to let them know what new developments we have and like to get feedback on that too. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Carlos. Sandy. Yay, good morning, everyone. Sandy Graham with West Coast Magazine. As you know, we've been putting it on hold for a minute, but we are ready, getting ready to gear up again, August, September. So looking forward to seeing everybody and everybody's looking forward to seeing us, the magazine that gets you noticed. Thank you. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you, Sandy. Jim Gallagher. Good morning, everybody. Jim Gallagher, I'm Vice President of Dog Park for Tuna Hills Nonprofit. Somebody's wrestling there. 
Uh, we're an animal advocacy, animal advocacy group, and we uh, raise donations to help our furry friends and also bring amenities to the park. And I always started with a poem. Instead, I'll give you a dog haiku. It's posted on the chat screen. Dig under the fence. Why? Because it's there. Because it's there. Because it's there. Uh, they're written by dogs, by the way. I am your best friend now, always, and especially when you are eating. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> that was amazing, Jim. Thank you. I'm going to write a book. I know. Just a bunch of dog <laughs> haikus. <laughs> uh, Lewis. Okay, thank you again. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke earlier. So any, anyhow, so bring more clients and again, uh, hybrid marketing and uh, merchant card or card service. One thing I'd like to share with the group is that business to business credit card processing can actually be reduced 20 to 25% just doing what they call optimization inside actually merchant credit card statements. The reason that uh, I wanted to reach out to the group is obviously I'm trying to reconnect with the uh, community. I used to go more door to door. Uh, much like any of you, obviously, have had to kind of adapt to the new world. And it's taken a little while to kind of kind of put everything together. But as a company, um, we would like to go ahead and actually get to learn our business owners in the community. And thank you for, again, making yourselves available here in this group. Welcome. Yep, welcome and thank you. Drew. Hey, good morning, Chino Chamber. Great to see everyone this morning. My name is Drew Sasser with Personalized Gifts for You. I am your one-stop source for embroidery, screen printing, promotional, and printed goods. You know, there is no better way than make an impact with your customers and to be top of mind than with promotional products. Putting your name in front of them on their desk, in their hand, uh, on a regular basis is the best way to make contact and keep you top of mind to your customers. So if you need it with your logo or if you're just looking for something new, call Personalized Gifts, ask for Drew. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Everybody was saying it. They're just all muted. Uh, Terry. Hey, good morning. Terry Fitch, Legal Shield Business Solutions, ID Shield. Hey, look, uh, our attorneys are being inundated. There's all sorts of questions and concerns about what's going on right now. How, what, what are my rights? What can I take care of? And most people don't have a place to call or check. We do have the chamber, and Zeb's done a great job keeping us updated on what's happening. But look, if you haven't done your estate planning documents, if you haven't really set yourself up to have your identity theft protected because these thieves are out there stealing every day, we're seeing all sorts of fishing expeditions and challenges going on. We have a special program through the chamber, so you can take advantage of our services by uh, just contacting me. We have a very substantial discounts on our services through the chamber. So Terry Fitch, Legal Shield Business Solutions, by the way, uh, my motto is if it's, it's not gonna happen to me, it's not a good plan. So uh, thank you, have a great day. And by the way, uh, you guys are doing a really good job out there, adapting to the situations going on. So, and Jeff, write a book. I'm telling you, it's good stuff. I mean, not Jeff. I mean, the uh, uh, Jim, write a book on those dog poems. Those are great. Uh, uh, Cecilia. Good morning. I'll have Vicky help me. Good morning, Chamber. My name is Cecilia Sweeney. I am with the American Cancer Society. Our mission is to save lives, celebrate lives, and lead the fight for a world without cancer. We do that through free patient services to cancer patients and their families, educating our communities on how to live healthier lifestyles, um, supporting research for groundbreaking cures, and advocating with our elected officials. Uh, our mission is under attack because of COVID-19 and we are desperately looking for people to support us. There's no better way for the community to know about um, how you support these type of organizations than by being a sponsor at the Chino Relay for Life, which is scheduled for October. If anyone is interested in doing that, I have lots of information. Again, Cecilia Sweeney with the American Cancer Society. Thank you, Cecilia. Deanna. You're muted still. You might have to unmute it. Unmute now. That's there you good. go. All right. So uh, good morning, you guys. Deanna with Infusion Zone Laser Tag Family Fun Center. 
our center is closed, but that's not a problem because we are bringing the party to you. We uh, launch Party to Go, where we will bring pizza, cupcakes, art supplies, so you could do a virtual art party. So it's for birthdays, great idea to do it for um, like a neighborhood party or do a double date and we'll deliver dinner and an art party to you. So Infusion Zone, good to be here this morning. Thank you, Deanna. Heather. Good morning, Chino Valley. Heather Nishioka with Chafee College. We're getting ready to do our drive-through grad fest next week and celebrate all of our students graduating. Um, please don't forget, this is a great time to go back to school at $46 a unit um, and virtual classes. There's no better time than to go back to school, get a certificate, get a degree. Um, we hope to see you online soon at JP College. Have a great day, guys. Thank you, Heather. Chris. You're muted, Chris. Sorry, I was trying to go. get there quicker. I just wasn't as fast as I thought. Good morning, guys. I'm so excited to be here and see everybody this morning. Um, business as usual over here. It's funny, I always see these posts on Facebook about why is government open? I don't know who anybody would call with all their complaints about everything we're doing wrong if we weren't open. There must be another hotline I don't know about. But that being said, we're really excited. There's actually a couple of programs coming up. Um, we're still working on ours, and we have to get it approved by HUD for CDBG, which will help pay some rent for Chino businesses. And then the County of San Bernardino has another one that's pending, and they're waiting on some approvals from Governor Newsom that will pay, I think it's $2,500 per business that will be a grant as well. So keep your eye out for those, and if they can help you out, absolutely apply for them and most of them are first come first serve so apply as soon as you guys find out and then more information we know i know zeb will let you know and i'll let you know as well hope you guys have a great day thank you chris jim maloney good morning chamber can you hear me zeb yes again okay jim maloney chance america financial advisors i am in my 21st year here at chance america i know i don't look like it it's the makeup from the uh, screen up there but uh I had my 20th uh, anniversary in April. We help people save money, get out of debt, uh, man, um, protect their loved ones against any losses uh, or, or losses on their assets. And uh, this week, I um, uh, am actually, we have been open pretty much. Uh, we never really did close down. I've been coming to the office one or two days a week. This week, I started coming in every day. Um, it, it's, it's a little easier, I think, for me to be in the office. Uh, starting my work day, get, getting back into the habit. I hope all of you are able to do that really soon. But I did want to talk about, um, uh, well, two things, life insurance. Um, none of my product planners, I have 125 of them, are testing for COVID. So definitely, I would say life and health insurance, this would be the best time to get it if you don't have it already. And uh, the last thing is the stock market going up and down. Uh, I, I've done quite a few clients over the last couple of weeks protecting their uh, all of their assets including their retirement funds against any losses in the stock market so love to hear from you good to see all of you <laughs> Jim Maloney Chance America Financial Advisor thank you thank you Jim Holly Holly going once and looks like she's frozen so let's go on to Vicki Vicki are you ready Hi everybody, Vicki Hitch here. I am your direct sales expert. I'm also an author, speaker, international business consultant, and a social media strategist. I'm trying to help you guys to build your business and your brand through social media and live streaming through COVID and beyond because it's the best way to get your message out there and the least expensive way. And it gives you an opportunity to really uh, develop the know, like, and trust factor and to build an audience that's relevant to your products and services. So I am gonna start a social media series, um, a free series for the chamber, but a paid series um, for the rest of the general public. And I hope that you guys will join us on the Do You Neo training that I have tonight for um, Do You Need Extra Opportunities because any business or brand can help to, to build the, those skills that they need right now during this. And I give ideas and suggestions on how you can actually amplify your business right now while you're in the middle of this. So um, Vicki Fitch, Vicki Fitch Enterprises, and just please let me know if there's anything I can do to assist you. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, Jeff, did you go yet? Yeah, you did. Okay, uh, Eric. I have an Eric Hogan. 
Good morning. Haven't been to a chamber meeting in several, several, several years. Uh, thank, thanks for having me here today. Um, I am with EM Link. I'm a local um, IT and telecommunications consultant um, focusing on small businesses. At this time during this COVID uh, crisis, we're helping a lot of businesses work remotely and collaborate rem remotely. And we also perform um, webcasting for uh, public meetings. Uh, we use platforms like Ustream, YouTube, um, Facebook, and so forth. Uh, thanks uh, for having me today. Hey, thank you for coming, Eric. Glad to see you after a few year hiatus. So that's good to see you. Thanks. Uh, and then I think I see Holly back on. Holly, are you ready? I think so. All right. Sorry about that. Hey, no worries. Good. All right. Hello. Good morning. I'm Holly Ratzlaff, attorney with Voorhees and Ratzlaff Law Group. We handle estate planning, probates, and trust administration. We are open. We are here to help Chino Valley residents with their probates and trust administrations. We're meeting uh, telephonically or over Zoom. We can also practice social distancing on the patio of our office. So give us a call for a free consultation. Or if any of you have any questions um, about friends or family that may be going through some complications with probate, we're happy to answer those for you as well. Thank you, Holly. And uh, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Rachel Arcega, LNR Promotions. We are still an essential business, so we help you with your clients um, or your employees if you want to give them gifts or um, supplies. Uh, we do a lot of promotional products with your logo on it, um, and I do events now on online and if anyone needs to consult about marketing now is the best time to do your marketing because of um you want to be top of mind and uh, be in front of your clients so let me know how i can help okay thank you, thank you razel and then i think i got everybody anybody i missed rudy rudy you missed me? yeah all right rudy no problem Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Rudy Navarro with Golden One Credit Union, uh, home loan advisor, been in business for over 31 years, seen the good, the bad, the ugly, that's for sure. Uh, rates are historic lows right now, which is good. They've kind of leveled out the last couple of weeks, but they're still very good. Uh, my, right now, my business is uh, a lot of refinancing, past clients, referrals, people getting rid of uh, their PMI and or cashing out to pay off some bills. Purchase business is still going strong also. Uh, Again, we've got uh, a 3% down all the way to $850,000 loan. Really, really good product of ours. So if you know anybody that's looking to refinance or purchase a home, please keep me in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. And then uh, I'll, <coughs> my name is Zeb Wellborn. I am the president of the Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about kind of our membership, but just so that you know, obviously it's kind of a tough time for a lot of businesses. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of update you guys on kind of how we're handling that. So, so right now we, the way that our membership works is they have a yearly membership. Uh, the yearly membership comes up whenever their anniversary date is. So we don't have everybody kind of falling in the same time period, but uh, we do have lots of people whose enrollment period is happening right now. And uh, what we're doing as a chamber is we're not dropping anybody. So any members who are can't afford to pay their dues or anything like that. So while this is going on, we're not going to be dropping any members. But it's really important. It's really important now more than ever that we are uh, supporting the efforts that we're doing. Because what we're doing is, is we're really advocating on behalf of those businesses. So like now is probably the most important time to take care of it. Uh, and I understand that it's a challenge for some businesses. And we want to be able to support those businesses too. So if that is an issue, please don't worry about it. We'll make sure you're taken care of. Uh, but at the same time, we also need to do the work of the chamber in order to make this stuff happening. And so, um, so yeah, so just uh, when you're keeping in mind and how we're going to be working together, because uh, I think you guys have known that we've been working hard in terms of advocating on behalf of our legislators or working with our legislators to try and help secure as much funding as we can for businesses to help that process here and also all of the other restrictions you know we're getting calls left and right about uh landlord issues about uh about uh, the pay pvp coming in about all the loaning programs about all these little challenges that businesses are facing and we're working overtime to try and make sure that we're protecting and supporting those businesses as best we can so i just kind of wanted to update you guys on that um 
with that, I want to introduce our speaker. So our speaker today is Connie Medina from Clarity Consulting. Uh, she helps leaders and teams achieve their business goals with focus, structure, and follow through. She's a coach and consultant. Connie, are you ready? All right, here, let's get our uh, presentation up. All right, super. So if you want to turn over, can you turn it over to me? I'm going to do that before. Yeah, so we can set it up this way. Uh, if you need to share your screen, you can hit, click on the share screen button and you can share it that way. Got it. I'm going to do that first. And then open this up. All right. Good morning, everyone. What a lovely chamber group. You guys are, um, I can feel the, the community spirit um, in this group here. I've been out to a lot of different chambers and a lot of different networking organizations. Um, and this is really lovely, so I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you so much. Um, again, uh, as the invitation shared, what we're really going to be focusing on today is helping you as business owners or um, as, uh, as key leaders in your organizations, uh, make sure that you're getting the right things done to help your business grow. And um, interestingly, when we set this up a couple of months ago, um, who knew that um, the value of getting the right things done in your team or in your business would become as critical as it is today, right? With so many changes happening and so much uncertainty, um, this is really more important now than ever. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here are some uh, interesting stats for you. You can be 30 times more successful in achieving your business goals. 30 times. With one very simple change. Anyone want to make a guess as to what that is? Communication. Communication, that's a great one. Anyone else? I would say pre-planning. Pre-planning, mm -hmm. okay. Good. Writing your goals down. Oh my gosh, who gets a, who gets a prize? That is exactly it. 30 times more successful in achieving whatever it is you're setting out to do just by writing down your goals. That one step alone puts you in an incredibly more powerful position to achieve what you want. It's not a guarantee, right? But that's just that one very simple step um, is, is really the, the first piece of getting where you wanna be. So here's the next one. 90% of companies fail. Any guesses what that might be? Business plan. What about the business plan? I would, I would say in their first three years. Write it down. They fail to communicate it to the people in the company. They don't yeah. have you one. Have, yeah, you guys are all heading in the right direction. It's that they, they have a strategic plan or some kind of a business plan or goal plan, and then they don't execute and achieve it. So many companies, I've worked in, you know, with companies and with nonprofit organizations who, you know, take an entire day or a few days, um, you know, doing some kind of strategic planning or annual planning, and then they have this wonderful, fancy document, and, and then it collects dust on the shelf for the next year. So um, having that plan is a great first step, but being able to execute it is is obviously where, you know, the, where the real magic happens. So that's what we're going to dig into today. So we're talking about goals. And I would love for each of you to just take a moment, and th this is going to be a really interactive, so I hope you've got two, your, your two cups of coffee in because this is going to be really interactive. I'm putting you guys to work. Um, I want you to just jot down there, um, what's the biggest goal you've achieved? And if anybody has one they're really excited to share, shout it out. I finished my master's last week. Yay! Nice. All right, it is. That is exciting. Thank you. Anyone else have one they want to share? Cecilia says she completed a marathon. <gasps> Cecilia, that's fantastic. So the masters and the, and the marathon, I'm also a marathoner too. So um, I love to share a connection with that story. 
um, those there's there's a lot that goes into that, right? You can't you don't just wake up on Monday and say on Saturday I'm going to complete my master's or I'm going to run a marathon. Um, I mean that would be amazing, but most people can't do that. So thinking about these goals that you've all just articulated and reflected on, what characteristics helped you achieve those goals? So Celia, how what characteristics about you, what characteristics did you have to rely on in order to train for and complete that marathon? I'm going to want to shout out one words or pop them in the chat. A discipline. I think she's, talk she's mm, talking. Good. She's needed. There we go. Dedication. Dedication. Focus. Focus. I I had a plan. I worked with a professional. Yep. Yeah. Discipline. Discipline. Right. Getting support. Some people would use the word accountability, right? You need some help to get there. It's not fun um, to Cecilia, right? To get up and, and do a four hour training run when it's 90 degrees, right? I mean, no one's waking up going like, yay, I can't wait to do that. But you, you need that structure and you need that accountability to make it happen, right? Because it's, it's a lot of work. So ultimately, growing your business, what I really want you to, to see the connection is growing your business really is all about goaling your business, right? Having a plan for what you wanna achieve or, or what you're doing to help sustain your business in this really uncertain time, because it is challenging. Um, and then connecting that to you know, goals that require discipline, that require focus, that really um, can be successful and, and, uh, and come to life through accountability, structure, and all those things that you guys just articulated on your own. That's really where the connection is. Um, that's important and that's how I help my customers to do that. So again, I'm Connie Medina. And I am the president of Clarity Consulting. I help leaders and owners make sure they're getting the right things done in their business to actually grow their business. And I teach a very straightforward three framework that is flexible for the challenges and the needs of the client, the team, or the business overall. And really that's around clarity, commitment, and consistency. And we'll, you'll see those three elements come to life here. So those are gonna be your three key takeaways to getting the right things done, that clarity, commitment, and consistency. So first we're gonna talk about goal setting. So um, how many, are you guys um, gonna be articulating new goals coming out of this? Many people just said, you know, my 2020 plans just went out the window. I have to completely reset. Most of my clients and most of my business owner uh, contacts are resetting their goals. So if you've already done that, or if you've started to think about that, just take a minute, just on your own, we don't need to do it in the chat, um, and write down what is one big goal you have, just say to the end of 2020. What's one goal? Just write that down in one simple statement. And then next, I'd like you to um, think about and note what the biggest benefit would be if you were to achieve that goal. And then the third part, is to identify what the biggest challenge is. And I know, obviously, we're all looking at a very common big challenge, which is you know, this whole COVID-19 uh, challenge that we're in right now, but look to be a little more specific. Is it um, that your business, the, the uncertainty of your business model changing? Is it the health implications? Um, any business owners I know are worried about losing their best team members, their best employees? because there is so much change happening out there in the workforce that they are worried that um, they won't be able to hold on to their best people and they might um, move on to um, some new opportunities in, in um, other companies that are growing more quickly. So try to focus in on what the biggest, more specifically what that biggest challenge would be. And then we'll come back to this a little bit later in our work together.
All right. Okay, so hopefully this is work that you can take away um, into your business um, and start, start finding some benefit today. So again, what are the keys to getting the right things done to grow your business? Because there's nothing more frustrated than seeing the wrong things get done or the right things not get the attention and time that they really deserve. So here's this three-part framework that I uh, shared a little bit earlier this morning, and I'd like to talk through it with you um, as an overview, and then we'll go a little bit more deeply into each of the elements and see how they can um, address some key challenges that you may be seeing in your business and how they can help benefit you and your business. So the first part is clarity, and that's really about creating focus, right? Um, the focus and the intentionality is really important. So, uh, Cecilia, when you train for your marathon, I'll give this, this is a great example. If you came to Zeb and you said, you know what, Zeb, we're going to do a race. And on June 1st, I want you to be ready for this race. I want you to show up and I want you to have like your race day attitude ready and I want you to train for it. And, and we're going to crush it. It's going to be amazing, right? And in your mind, you're thinking of this great marathon. And you go off and you train for your marathon and you've got everything you know, in line. You're doing your distance days, you're hydrating, you're getting your, you know, your timing plan in place. You've got your shoes ready. You've got your outfit ready, right? You know what your fuel program is. And Zeb goes off and he's like, well, I'm a, I'm a biker. So he's training for a bike race. And Zeb shows up on training day and realizes it's a marathon. <laughs> right? He is not anywhere near prepared, even though he may have trained on his bike every day, even though he may have all of the great equipment for a bike race. The fact is that he is, was actually not working toward the right goal. He put a lot of maybe great time and effort into it, but actually isn't, wasn't preparing to work toward achieving the goal, right? So there wasn't clarity in there. Right. Obviously, when you engage in a master's program, you're pretty clear on what you're doing. Right? You're not investing your time and efforts in, in other things, but the, that's the kind of awareness um, that my clients gain from recognizing where they don't have clarity in their business and in their work, right? because it's easy to get busy doing things. Right? So focusing in on the things that are most important for you, for your team, and for your business is really where it starts. Without that, it doesn't matter. Right? The rest of it doesn't matter if you don't know where you're going. So the second part of this framework is commitment, and that ensures the momentum and measurement that you're getting there. So we'll go back to Cecilia and her marathon training program, because, because I, can connect, I can connect with that um, from my own personal experiences. So in a marathon training program, you backtrack from the date of the race, right? You've got your race date, and then you've got your, um, uh, the time when you're ramping down your mileage right before it right? And then you've got your, you know, your 20 plus miler is like your last long training run. And then everything goes back from there. Right. Right. And so, you know, all along the way where you're supposed to be. If this Saturday is an eight mile training run, this Saturday, you know, you're supposed to run eight miles, mm -hmm. right? You don't go into a marathon training program and just start kind of running willy nilly. You know that you have to build up in order to get to the amount of mileage needed to get through the race. So that, that commitment is partly about taking this goal that you want to achieve and breaking it down into something more actionable because starting today and saying, I'm going to run 26.2 miles, right? Three, four, or five, six, seven months from now is a really big goal, right? So it's, it, there's benefit in breaking it down into something that's more actionable that you know, this week I need to run 25 total miles and I need to run a long run of five miles on Saturday, right? It becomes really concrete. And then you've got that measurement, right? You've got that measurement, you can check your progress along the way. And that's how you know whether you're on track or not, right? But for many of my clients, they, they, they are missing the elements of commitment. They create a plan, they have a goal, but they don't really follow through on it. I was talking with a, um, a team leader, a sales team leader, um, last week, and they have um, created a, a kind of a 12 week um, goal plan for each of their sales members. Mm -hmm. And they don't do anything with it. They don't check in every week. They don't, you know, they haven't broken it down into weekly activities that they want their salespeople to do. And so everyone's just kind of floating around, right? They're doing okay, but they're not 
really cannot like working at a hundred percent, like that he knows that they can be. And that's really the piece that's, that's missing, um, is that element for them. Um, the other piece then is having consistency. So again, go back to Cecilia, cause I can connect all the, back to the marathon experience. You're gonna be my, my, uh, my assistant today. So we're training for a marathon. The hardest part is actually, you know, running that distance and getting through it, the heat, the exhaustion, right? The stomach cramps, the leg cramps, what I'm hungry, I'm low on salt, I'm low on sugar, right? All of those things come into play and you can't plan for those as much as, as you've done your training. You don't know that, um, you know, that it's gonna be hotter than expected on race day, right? Or you don't know that it's gonna rain, you weren't ready for the rain to happen. So what you really wanna do is you wanna create as much consistency as you can underneath that to leave room for the challenges that are inevitably going to come up. Okay, so one great example, super simple, that I think everyone can, can um, understand is you don't wear new shoes on race day because you don't know if the shoes are gonna, are gonna fit, feel nice, give you a blister, whatever, right? And you don't wear anything new in your training gear on race day. And you don't change your you know, hydration plan on race day. You keep all of those things consistent and simple to leave your energy and your focus for things that you know, that are inevitably going to hit you, right, during that race. And that happens in business, right? So um, I'll show you some samples of, of kind of what this looks like in a typical workday. But the goal here is to really create more simplicity and fewer decisions in your day so that you leave time and energy for the problems that are going to come up. And more importantly, for the strategy and innovation and growth in your business that's really going to help move you forward, right? So those are those three pieces. Let's take a look at what this looks like in a typical workday. I thought this would be helpful to kind of make this real for everybody. So here's what clarity sounds like when it's missing. Well, I thought Dan was leading the project, or you know, we thought 10% was the sales goal, and now you're telling me it's 15%. Um, these are things I've heard from my own, uh, in my own uh, leadership experience and then with my clients as well. Um, IT can't help marketing on the project. So now marketing can't achieve their goal because IT had different conflicting goals in the company, right? So IT might get their project done, but marketing isn't going to because there wasn't clarity between those two departments. Um, or I didn't know I, did, I could make that decision, right? So then, you know, who's, then you're pointing around, who can make this decision? Who can do this for me? right? It wasn't clear who actually owns the project. You can't manage by committee. There has to ultimately be one person in charge um, uh, to make things, to keep things focused and keep things moving. Um, my favorite, why do we keep starting new projects when the old ones <laughs> aren't finished, right? Um, and that's not to say that you can't change your mind, but, you know, there, there I do have clients who chase idea after idea after idea after idea, and they're just spinning their wheels and not getting the right things done. Um, or didn't that initiative get put on hold? I love that one too. Why are we working on this? I thought you said yes. So here are some things when you have clarity in your own work, in your team, in your business, here are some things that you would say or that you might hear from your team members. I have a few really important goals and those are the things I'm focused on. Well, my goals are SMART goals. They're specific, measurable, they're actionable, they're realistic, right? And they're time bound. A vague goal like I want to be better or I want to be, um, uh, you know, we want to grow our business by how, in which way? Are you adding a new revenue stream? Are you adding a new product line? Are you going after a new client base? Are you just going deeper into your market? Because each one of those goals is gonna have a different plan. Um, this one is one that I think is so impactful if you're a business owner and you manage a team, that management and staff goals connect. So if you're the business owner and you have a goal, you've set a goal for the company to increase profitability, that goal should somehow be reflected in all of your leadership team goals, right? Your IT manager, your operations manager, your finance manager, your client services manager, everyone should somehow take part in that in, within their own space, within their own contribution. But everyone should know that we're really working on profitability because then you're gonna get more energy around that and make more progress against that goal. Um, and then talking about your goals regularly and adapting your goals intentionally. It's okay to change, but you want to make sure that you're being intentional about it so that you don't have eight people still chasing goal, the first goal that you did away with, right? Where just a few people are getting started on the new goal that you think is really important. 
So when you do change that goal, you just want to do it with clarity and intentionality. All right, so here's, um, uh, this is a kind of a um, conglomeration of um, things that a client that I've worked with uh, has shared. So he came to me and he wants to grow his business. He's in a, an essential service area and he absolutely can grow his business hands down. No problem. Um, he thinks he can do it four times over in within the next year or two. So he came to me and he's like, great, we're going to get started on goal setting. I said, super, write All your goals down and come to our first session. So, you know, we're ready to, to dig in. So he comes to the first session and he had 19 goals. I said, we cannot, there's no way you can't chase 19 different goals. So our first work together was really about helping him focus in on the, the most important goals that were gonna drive him in the most valuable direction and recognizing that some of those goals actually had to happen first before a longer term goal. So at the end of that first session working together, he, this is again, kind of paraphrased from the end of our conversation, but he said, for the first time, I feel confident knowing I have the right goals and the right plan. And I have the tools and support to stay focused. And once I achieve them, I can work toward this long-term goal of franchising. So he knows he has a plan to franchise his business, but he can't do that unless he has these other elements in place, right? So we really honed in on the things he has to do first to get those things in place, put all of your energy into those things, get them done. And then you're opening up the gates to kind of this new, you know, new realm of goals for your business that are really exciting. And that's really where he wants to be is he wants to be franchising his business. It's exciting. All right. So um, commitment. Here's what the, the second part of this framework looks like. So you might be hearing <laughs> these sorts of things. These are great. Uh, we're supposed to make 200 calls a day. I didn't know that. Well, the sales manager knew it, but the salespeople didn't know it. Right. Or I didn't realize that my team was off track with this major initiative. Um, we've talked about this for months and months and months in our meeting and nothing ever happens. Um, or I always love this one, your numbers don't match my numbers. What report are you looking at? Right, anyone ever heard any of these in their businesses? Right, or in, in, um, in businesses that you've worked in previously, right? And this, is, there's, this can create a lot of frustration for you, um, for your managers and for your employees as well when there's this constant kind of you know, finger pointing in different directions and no one really understands what it is we're doing or there's not the follow through there. Um, we had a, a, at a former uh, company I worked in, we had a massive project launch um, that was, it wasn't, we weren't checking on it enough. Um, it was in a different department and the department the project manager in that department notified the company president the day before it, the launch that it wasn't ready. Yes, <laughs> I see some faces. And it wasn't like, it's not ready, we need a couple more days to put a few finishing touches. It was not anywhere close to ready, right? And I, I, I thought that the president was absolutely gonna lose her mind. Um, but the takeaway from that is we really, could have had some better commitment aspects in place. We really could have been asking for some demos. We could have been asking for some checkpoints along the way instead of just saying everything's going okay, right? And, and waiting all the way until the end because it could put the company in a, in a, in a tough position. Um, so that's what having a lack of commitment can look like in your day-to-day -day work. But when you've got that in place, you've got that actionable plan for your goals, right? Or you have those key milestones for your project. You know that if we're gonna do this thing by the end of the year, by September 1st, we really have to be at this point where we can show this thing to our prospective clients, right? Or we have to have this sample that we can show in a focus group. Um, or we have to have this piece of our strategy documented so then we can start implementing it because we need September, October, November, December to actually implement that part of the plan. Um, so you want to have those common progress checks in place and you want to meet regularly. Go back to this, um, this sales team leader that I met with last week who they have a plan and they don't meet any, they don't ever meet regularly and they don't bring that sales plan. They don't talk about it. Right. Um, so there is no real accountability and then they're losing out on the opportunity to build momentum, um, find out what's really working, find out what isn't working and, and then continue to shape what those practices are on a week to week basis. So they're making progress. All right, so here's um, a wonderful, wonderful uh, senior executive I worked with. And she, although we worked again through kind of all three elements of the framework, her biggest challenge was really around commitment because she felt that holding people accountable and, and having some kind of checkpoints 
um, it kind of went against her style of leadership. She felt she was a very caring leader. She wanted everyone to feel valued. Um, and so for her working through this, um, she really recognized that she can be a caring leader and hold people accountable because what she ended up doing was fixing everything for them. Um, so they would bring her, if anyone's ever read the, um, the Harvard Business Review article about whose monkey is it, right? So if you, you walk down the hallway and a team member stops you and says, oh, there's this problem and I don't know what to do. You know, this client's unhappy or the customer's unhappy or whatever. You know, I'm just stuck. I don't really know what to do. And then you, as the manager maybe, or the business owner say, well, gosh, that sounds like a really tough problem. Um, you know, let me get on the phone with the, with the client and, you know, and figure it out. So the monkey jumped from this person's shoulder onto your shoulder. And if you've had the experience of maybe walking down the hall or walking through your office and, have, and running into people and then adopting all of these problems, these, all these questions, right, all these monkeys, this is what she was doing. She was limiting her own growth and limiting the growth of her team. So she recognized that she could be a caring leader and hold people accountable. And she said that having weekly metrics would imp actually empowered her team. They were happy because they didn't feel like they needed to continually come to her and check with her, right? That she wasn't the ultimate source of problem solving. They became the source of problem solving. And then it eliminated a lot of unnecessary work across her team because you know, they weren't coming to her. Um, and they, they were able to make decisions that guided them to do the things that were most valuable in their role. And then for her, it was great because she wasn't working anymore on Sundays. So one of the things that she shared with me that became her new mantra when people came to her with a question was, um, you know, that sounds like a great um, question or problem. I have 100% trust in you that you'll make the right decision. Let me know what it is you decide. Right, because ultimately she had, she had really turned over that commitment to them she, because she'd given clear expectations and she had given them kind of these checkpoints along the way and allowed them to kind of work in that space in between one checkpoint and the next. So she was very happy. All right, the last piece of the framework is consistency. So um, this is where, again, you're working to support quality and simplicity. Who doesn't want more simplicity in their day-to-day -day work? So you know, when, when consistency isn't in place, with my clients, I hear things like, the week keeps getting away from me. Um, great questions like, who's supposed to attend, attend the client launch? Well, if you do a client launch every week, it would be great if it's just known who's supposed to attend the launch so that someone doesn't have to come and ask, right? Or when does the thank you go out? This is one of my, one of my clients I'm working with right now who's having a conniption fit because the thank you and the follow-up isn't happening after a client service. And he thought he was the one who, as the president, who needed to follow up. So it was really, for him, it was just about getting um, this consistent process in place so he didn't have to be the one to chase this thank you step, right? Then it would automatically happen and he defined who was responsible, how it needed to get done, and by when, right? That it needed to go out within 24 hours. And then he has a commitment piece, a tracking uh, um, piece in place to help him know that it actually has gotten done. Um, how do you submit a, like a facilities request? That's, you know, that's not the kind of thing you want somebody standing at your door asking. Where's the contract template or who can appro approve rush shipping, right? All of these things are, if there are things that are happening day to day regularly in your team or in your business, um, if you can make these things consistent, if you can set up some repeatable routines, um, that's really going to eliminate and reduce the amount of questions and the decision making for these routine things that are happening. And again, free everyone up for real problem solving and strategy and innovation and business growth, because that's where the magic really happens. So if you have consistency, you've got these routines and processes documented and not just documented, but everyone trained, because sometimes that is, is, a, is a big opportunity to take advantage of. Um, one thing I really love to help my clients develop is a decision-making framework. Um, because this, when you have a consistent decision-making framework, then everyone on your team can get involved and everyone can understand how it is that you as an organization think through a question or a problem. So, um, and that also can then help build the capacity of your team, similar to my client who was kind of taking on all of the, the questions and problems for herself is she wasn't building that problem-solving capacity and, and that independence in developing leaders across her team. 
Um, so developing a decision-making framework can be super valuable tool and great when you develop it with your, with your own team, right, for something that works for your business. Um, revising processes to make them better is a huge thing. I mean, if you put a process in place and it seems to get stuck at one or two different points pretty frequently, there's something there that could be an opportunity to simplify, right, or to make it better. And then relying on processes like at least 85% of the time. Okay, we want to try to not work by exception, right? So if everything is a question of, well, today it's Wednesday and it's partly cloudy, you know, and, and, and I'm wearing green, then we do this. But if it's Thursday and it's sunny and I'm wearing blue, then we do something else, right? Because that can, that can be a real challenge for an organization and just create a lot of complexity that takes away your focus from getting the right stuff done. And then ultimately, this consistency is also about dedicating time for innovation and strategy because that's what will help your business grow. So a great um, client that I worked with, um, her biggest need was in developing some consistency for her, uh, her schedule, her kind of her approach to her work. Um, and she acknowledged that her work week was just crazy. She said, I just know I'm not operating at 100%, but if I can get there, I know that I can grow my business. So um, helping her develop this simple system to plan and how to spend her time. She's a, a law firm partner. Um, she was missing time every week for business development and new client acquisition because she was just always busy and the time kind of just got away from her. So by dedicating a particular set of um, time blocks to do that and protecting those, time on her, those times on her calendar, she was able to help her business grow tremendously. Um, and and that, that piece alone was really um, the thing that really helped make her make sure she got the right things done because what wasn't getting done was business development. So imagine what if your company department or goals were clear, you had goals that were actionable plans with regular checkpoints, and you have these day-to-day -day routines that were simple and known and common, you and your entire team could focus on the most important activities, right? That's, that's really what we're all talking about right now is how can you make sure that you're getting the most important things done in your business? So <laughs> sometimes work might feel like this, Right? Anyone ever feel like this in your day? Looks like, looks like more fun. <laughs> it does look like, now they look like they're having fun. That's true, right? But this sense of like everyone being facing in different directions, where are we going? It's all crowded. No one can really get where it is they, they need to be going. And then contrast this with this. So imagine if everyone in your team or in your business we're all rowing in the same direction, right? Or even if you just looked at this picture and said, what's the difference between, there's eight people rowing, what's the difference between one or two people rowing this boat versus all eight people rowing? Or what's the difference between one or two people rowing you know, that way and then a few people kind of floundering around in the water, that's gonna make it even more difficult, right? So we're trying to contrast this with this in your work. So if you wanna be 30 times more effective and you want your business to be among that 10% of actually achieving your strategic plan, we're gonna focus in on getting those right things done in your business. We're gonna go back to your goals. We've got just a couple of minutes left here. So um, normally in a live setting, I'd ask you to kind of collaborate here. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through this and get you started. And then I know it, it seems like you guys are a, a fairly well-connected collaborative team. So I'll ask you to um, maybe take this as an opportunity to work with and partner up with following the meeting at some point in the next week um, with, with someone that you either work with really well and know really well here in the chamber, or maybe someone that you met this morning um, who you, you haven't had a chance to get to know very well. That might be a great opportunity for both networking and collaboration and support. So I want you to look back at your original goal that you wrote down at the beginning of the presentation and see if there's an opportunity to revise it. Is there anything that you want to make more clear, more specific, more measurable? We talked about the goal being something to complete by the end of the year, but maybe thinking about it, you recognize it, that it needs to be done sooner or maybe it's going to take longer. So see if there's anything else you wanna to add to that goal to make it more clear, more specific, so that if you went and showed your next door neighbor 
they would recognize exactly what it is you're trying to accomplish. And they themselves can have the ability to look at it at the end point when that goal is supposed to be done and decide whether it is in fact complete. So you kind of want to make it a little foolproof for even somebody not, not, you know, not involved in your business to know whether it got done. And then move into commitment, right? Because having a goal is one thing, but you know, making it real and making it actionable, and making progress is, is, uh, is really critical. So see if you can identify maybe two or three smaller goals underneath that. Maybe there's a key checkpoint, you know, by June 1st, maybe I, there's something really critical I have to have done. Or by the end of this quarter, there's something I have to get done. Maybe by the start of quarter four, there's something really critical that you want done. And then the last piece would be consistency. So um, think about what it is that you, one simple thing that you could do regularly to support this goal. One simple thing that you could do. It might be... I'm going to put the, post this goal next to my computer and I'm going to, you know, look at it when I do my weekly planning on Fridays. Or I'm going to start every uh, team meeting by restating this really critical business goal to my team so we stay focused. I'm just going to start every meeting with that. Think of one simple, consistent step you can take to support that goal. All right, got something actionable to take away. So um, just kind of thinking about, you know, where, where is this going to provide value for you as, um, as a, a leader, as a business owner? Just think of what 10% more effectiveness, 10% more of investing in the right activities. And these are just a couple of different a variety of examples. So an executive with a, you know, $100,000 salary, 10% more effectiveness four hours of not frittering away through email and social media during the week, but four hours instead of working on vision or strategy, right? That's like a 10% value right there. Doesn't need to be 10% more working, just 10% better working, 10% of your time invested in a more impactful way. Or savings if you're trying to implement a new CRM. If you're going to save a quarter of a million dollars on implementing a new CRM, what's the value of making sure that gets done or doesn't get done? Or if you were able to get it done faster than you thought because your team was all rowing in the same direction, right? Or think of a $10 million business <clears throat> for the time that you might acknowledge, you know, doesn't go toward the most impactful activities each week for the right things not getting done. Extrapolate that across a business of, you know, $10 million. 10% of that is a lot. So think about that boat again when everyone's rowing in the same direction. It can have an incredible impact on your business. <clears throat> I was going to go back to a client story, but we've kind of covered all three of those. So just wanted to quickly, I know we're wrapping up for time here. Um, how, um, how can you and your business, whoop, typo here. How can you and your business um, get support to get the right things done? Um, these are a couple of the different services that I, that I offer to clients. And I always customize for them based on what it is that they need, but I do work with them on kind of a, a half day or full day intensive to give them a jump start. Um, I do also offer ongoing coaching for leaders and owners. Um, and then I also uh, offer a year long program for a business leader uh, and ideally their executive team to help them make sure they're making the biggest impact in their business. So I know we're right here at the end of time. Thank you very much. Are there any questions at all that I can answer before we turn it back over to Zeb? I'm trying to check the Zoom chat. Good morning, Connie. Lewis here. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, go ahead, Lewis. Okay, perfect. So I know that with the uh, information you shared, uh, mm -hmm. teams and stuff like that, a lot of, like for me, myself, basically kind of like one person, you know, an employer, <laughs> me, me, myself, and I. Um, but I, I can relate a lot of that to myself in regards to what you're saying. Obviously, you know, focusing and clarifying that um, for goals, I did definitely uh, 
clear that up for myself. Uh, it was a little general on the top end, but I came down to an activity that would uh, be five per day. And that would be to reach out to the uh, directory of the you know, chamber. Right. I think it's 630 there, but it's very focused. So thank you for the clarity there. Appreciate it yeah. and love to connect with you in the future. Good, that's great. Sometimes it's that one little tweak, right? Really elevates what you're doing and it gives you that extra boost of focus. And, and, and so kudos to you for, for adding just that one piece this morning that that's really gonna help you moving forward. Any other questions? Connie, just a quick one, <clears throat> Jim Gallagher. Um, yep. Do you do consulting for small business? A lot of the people in this group are single entrepreneurs, so maybe one employee or so. Sure. It's a lot of money, Molly. Yeah, no, I work with, um, with individual small business owners, um, solopreneurs, um, as well as uh, small businesses with leadership teams and larger teams. I think we should um, do it like this. Both individual coaching. With that line? And then, um, and then group coaching. Right with that concrete start? I'm not sure who's not muted. Let's see. Um, so yes, to answer your question, I work with small businesses down to solo uh, preneur owners. I've worked with, uh, with a great bookkeeper. Um, I've worked with a, a very small uh, marketing firm here in Orange County. Um, again, work with, um, I mentioned that one executive who is the fixer, right? Um, and so she and I worked individually um, just on her own leadership and management approaches to help her get more um, out of her own growth and help her team grow. Um, Jim also asked the question, am I doing everything virtually? I was actually doing everything virtually before. Uh, Black uh, Yeah, so, uh, so Zoom calls and everything was really um, the way I had set up my business to allow me to um, you know, not be um, held only to a geographic region here. And that actually that executive client that I mentioned um, was based out in the Chicago area. So everything is by Zoom call. Happy to do local for those who are um, local. Um, the client with the 19 goals actually lives about four miles from my house and we were set up to, you know, to get started working together face by face to face, but we got started working the day that everything shut down. So everything's by Zoom for now. All right. Uh, thank you, Connie. Thank you for the presentation. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and uh, so, so now we're kind of uh, opening it up for a chance to give kudos or recommendations to somebody else in the chamber. So if you have someone you'd like to give a recommendation for, please do so. Going once. Going twice. All right, well, cool. Then we get a good list of chamber updates for today. So... We have our pitch competition. We talked about it at the beginning, but I definitely want to mention again, our pitch competition is tomorrow night from six to nine. So imagine like a shark take event. We have five finalists from Chino Valley Unified School District. They all have these great entrepreneurial ideas. We've partnered them up with mentors to help prepare them for their pitch. So their pitch is going to be live on Thursday night. The program is going to be from about, it'll probably be from six to eight, but it'll start at six o'clock. Uh, so it's free to attend. Anybody who wants to is more than welcome to attend. We have a great group of sponsors and uh, people who have committed to supporting these students. And, and this program is not just designed to support entrepreneurship in our area. We're using it as a way to create job shadowing and internship programs to connect our students with business leaders in our community. So this program kind of helps support those efforts the chamber is already doing to help connect businesses with our business leaders. Uh, so that's number one. Every Tuesday, we have a meeting from uh, 8.30 to 9.30 on with our Chino Valley leaders. So we've gotten a lot of really good feedback on that. They're giving really up-to-date information about what the newest regulations, rules, restrictions are. So if you're not sure about opening up your business, we cover that in 8.30. If you're at 8.30 on Tuesdays, if you're not sure what this, if you're allowed to open or what that opening looks like, that's an opportunity. There's all sorts of things we cover there, funding programs, opportunities from uh, our school district and other different utilities agencies. So it's really, I highly recommend you doing that. We also put out a survey last week on what steps you feel like we should be taking in order to open up responsibly. Uh, so that's something that I hope all of you guys take the time to fill out is how would you feel safe going into a business? What type of things would you like to see in place? Because the sooner we get that in line, what's going to happen is, is as these phases go along, they're going to open things up. But if 
if people don't feel safe or if there's not a way to go about doing it, then, then we run into those same challenges again. So the sooner we can be on the ball with letting everybody know, here's what the expectations of this new opening is going to be. And, and this is what we as business owners feel comfortable doing. Uh, then that's going to make it easier for decisions to be made uh, from our legislators. So just as an example, uh, the County of San Bernardino has come up with a program where to open up safely, they want you to have certain things in place. So it's like hand sanitizers, it's signage, it's the little X's on the ground that make sure you're separating six feet apart. But because of that, they're going to be giving you funding for it. So the County of San Bernardino has allocated $30 million to give funding to businesses to help them pay for those things. So that they get it. And that comes about because of the surveys that they're getting, the surveys that we're collecting, the information that we're giving them, because that's what business owners say, hey, we want to do all these things, but it's going to cost us money. It's going to be tough to do. Uh, and so that's where the county can come in and help support that effort. So your feedback is extremely important in that endeavor. Um, They're calling that the COVID compliance program. Yep. So I think you practically get to put a sticker on your window if you're compliant. Yep. Which is perfect. Uh, so with that, uh, I think that kind of covers everything that the chamber's in. We really want to have a good attendance and a good showing for tomorrow night because it is our kind of first virtual event. It's a really good program designed for students. I think it'll be a fun thing to do. I think what's going to happen is we're also going to have some entertainment there. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have some music played for the, by the rock stars of the Morrow group. Uh, I, I was able to get some people who have appeared on the Shark Tank and then they've given their pitches in the Shark Tank arena. Uh, so I think they're going to be on the call and we're going to have some legislators. Uh, we're going to have business owners as judges. Many of you guys are participating in the program as well. So it'll be a good thing to get to. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions before we call it a day? I'm going to open up the, oh, the other thing is, is make sure you, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ann. You're on mute. Thank you. I just wanted to say about the pitch uh, competition that I've been during the junior high um, girl, Elizabeth. And, you know, these kids are really smart. And this is uh, a real opportunity for those of us that are in the chamber to really show support for these young people because these are going to be our business leaders of tomorrow and we want them to see that the chamber is involved we want them to see that we are there to mentor them and to help them grow and become the business leaders that we are and um and i appreciate it, connie uh your presentation today because i also do something similar to what you're doing and i know how important you know it is for us to really support them but this little kid that i'm working with boy she's sharp she's a seventh grader and uh, she's competing against all high schoolers, you know, so we spent some time last Friday talking about strategy and um, looking at some things that uh, she could do to help her be more competitive, you know, with the high schoolers. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and very, very uh, entertaining from a speaking point of view, but please do come out and let everyone know they really they really should come and attend this because it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll definitely be there tonight and tomorrow night, Zeb. Okay, great. And then uh, let me run through our, we have our group of ambassadors. We had an ambassador meeting yesterday where we got a chance to reconnect and talk about uh, how we're going to help assist in the different things that we have going on. So if you're an ambassador, do me a favor and raise your hand in there. Yeah. Hey, Zeb, I didn't get a link to that meeting. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll address that later. Uh, yeah. So my apologies, but uh, we did send that out uh, yesterday. So yeah, I was wondering. Guys, thank okay. you guys for attending uh, that and for your participation and as being an ambassador, oh. Sandy. Zeb, yes. I wanted to share with everybody. Um, one of the things I'm doing, I'm helping the neighborhood, uh, the Chino neighborhood house with donations and I'm taking food or money. And um, I wanted to put it out there. If anybody wants to contribute, I'll go and pick it up. Um, you know, hands off, whatever. I'll wear my mask. And if you want to put some money in an envelope, um, I'll take it and give it to Kevin. Um, they really need help because of the um, families that just the number doubled and tripled and how many people need food. So it's really close to my heart. And if anybody would... Um, join me, I would appreciate it. I am going to send my phone number and um, reach out. Um, thank you. Sandy, hi. Hi, Sandy. Hi. This is Drew. Hi. 
Yeah. Uh, the Lions Club's doing the same thing. So uh, if you need help with that, oh, we'd be more than happy to to collect up food and and deliver it for you. Uh, Sunday's a big day for them as they're doing a big uh, giant. You know, everybody come help us out because the pantry's empty. So uh, yes, we're there for you also, Lions Club. Oh, great! Thank you, thank you. I, I well, want to end this on time. You. So let me finish the formal meeting, and then we can feel free to chat afterwards. Uh, so the last thing I want to highlight is I want to highlight our other board member. We have a board member here in present day, Jim Gallagher. So thank you, Jim. With that, I want to say our official meeting is not adjourned yet. Uh, I want to give you an assignment. So we always talk about doing something at the end. Now that we have these virtual meetings, I want you to go and leave a review and recommendation for somebody that is in this group. So I want you to take a look at uh, if you haven't made a connection yet, you can do so today. Connect with somebody, chat with them. LinkedIn is a great opportunity to give a, a recommendation. So I'd encourage you guys to leave a review and or recommendation on, on LinkedIn today. So that's your assignment. Uh, with that, I want to call this meeting to an end. And we can feel free to stick around. We can open it up for questions. Uh, but uh, for all intents and purposes, the meeting is over. So thank you for coming today. Awesome. Great, thank you. Have a great week, everybody.